Hey, do you love playing football? Here, you will understand the concept of drag and lift using a soccer ball. So let us bring soccer ball that floats in the atmosphere, defying gravity for now. Okay the air is calm. Soccer ball is floating as usual. Now, do you know? Which forces are acting on the soccer ball except gravity? It is the force created by atmospheric pressure. They act perpendicular and almost same magnitude on our soccer ball. Look how pressure acts perpendicular to every of those faces. Now, the air is not calm. They are moving with constant velocity V. So, including the pressure, there is another stress that will act on our soccer ball, and that stress is the shear stress. These shear stress is caused due to viscosity of the air molecules. And they act tangent to our soccer ball faces. If you look properly pressure acts normal to those faces, so they are even called normal stress. Whereas viscosity acts tangentially. So shear stress. The forces provided by these two stress, pressure stress and shear stress, creates so-called drag and lift. The force of flowing fluid exerts on a body in the flow direction is called drag. Whereas the forces in the direction normal to the flow tend to move the body in that direction is called lift. So drag and lift are just the components of pressure and shear forces. In more precise way, if you create the Cartesian coordinate system, the total component of forces in X direction is called drag, whereas the component of forces in Y direction is called lift. So, for two-dimensional flows, the resultant of the pressure and shear forces can be split into two components, one in the direction of flow, which is the drag force, and another in the direction normal to flow, which is the lift. Of course, the ball will flow in X direction, if lift is zero. Or in normal to flow direction, if drag force is zero. The ball might move in both direction, if both forces are activated. In the end it just depends, which force is greater. The total drag and lift forces acting on the body are determined by this equation. If you look at them properly, it also says that drag and lift are both function of pressure and shear stress. These equations are valid for any body, but for experimental analyses they are not practical, since the detailed distributions of pressure and shear forces are difficult to obtain. The widely used alternative is to define dimensionless lift in drag coefficients. If you just grab those values then you can easily calculate drag and lift forces. Area of our ball, density and velocity of wind can be calculated. The area on this formula, can be frontal area or plan form area. It depends upon the object orientation, with respect to fluid direction. Let us visualize these frontal area and plan form area, using a flat plate. Again the air is blowing with constant velocity. Frontal area is the projected area seen by a person looking toward the object from a direction parallel to the upstream velocity. So this red color is the frontal area for this plate. Planform area is the projected area seen by an observer, looking toward the object from a direction, normal to the upstream velocity. 
so these area depends upon the direction of wind. Okay, now the main question is, do drag force acting on a flat plate, depends on both pressure and shear stress? Remember drag force acts parallel to the direction of air. So do shear stress, it acts tangentially everywhere to the surface of our flat plate, just like our soccer ball. As both drag force and shear stress are parallel, so shear stress will surely contribute on creating drag force. But what about pressure? Do it contribute to drag force? Well the pressure acts perpendicular to surface everywhere. If you look properly, the only force it can contribute for creating drag, is the force exerted on frontal area. And for thin flat plate, this frontal area is almost negligible. So only shear stress can contribute for creating drag. As other pressure cannot drag the plate because, they are totally perpendicular. Now, if you align this plate normal to the flow, then drag force depends on the pressure only and is independent of the wall shear. This time shear stress acts normal to the free stream flow. So its contribution is zero. There will be pressure difference between front and back surface. Which might drags the plate. The low pressure at the back surface is due to fluid separation. Which I will describe more detail about it in the next video. When you incline flat plate with the flow direction then both shear force and pressure will contribute to drag. So drag is due entirely to friction drag for flat plate parallel to the flow. It is due entirely to pressure drag for flat plate normal to the flow. And it is due to both for incline 1. Please subscribe for more fluid mechanics.